In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. For he is the merciful lamb that was slain for you to take away your sin. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. So glad that you're watching these programs and learning on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue a series of teaching out of the Word of God on the ministry of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' life, the Apostles' life, and for today. So I'd like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I ask, Lord, that you would pour out your Spirit upon them and reveal yourself to them. I thank you for your wisdom and your grace, the understandings of your ways to be made known unto them, Lord. And those that are watching for their first time, Lord, I thank you for opening their heart to the truth that is in your Son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of the gospel to go into their homes and into their lives, bringing a great transformation, Father, in Jesus' name. God bless you for watching. We're going to get right into the scriptures. We've been teaching out of the book of Acts and into the gospel of John on the ministry of the Holy Spirit, how Jesus spoke to his disciples and apostles about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to come to you. And how he's going to come to you by the, by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And so today we're going to start out in Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith. The faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Jesus is the living Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him and for Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh. God was made flesh. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus came to deliver us out from under the law. He represented us at the cross of Calvary. He was your burden barrier at the cross of Calvary. He took the iniquity and the transgression of us all. He bore in himself the iniquity of us all. He was made sin for us who knew no sin to make us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See, grace, the grace of God is God's unmerited favor. It's the realm of God where all provision has been made by Jesus Christ because he shed his blood to remit the sins of man. He remitted your sins upon the cross of Calvary. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes your transgressions from you. What he did upon Calvary's cross was a perfect holy sacrifice. He was a sin offering upon the cross. You're reconciled to the Father of glory by the death of Jesus Christ and by his holy shed blood, faith in the blood of Christ. See, when Jesus said upon the cross, it is finished, that word finished means paid in full. It was paid in full your soul was paid for by the blood of Christ. How do you become a child of God? Simply faith in Christ Jesus and Him alone. It's not faith in your church. It's not faith in your, the church name that's upon the door of your church. It's faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. Jesus broke down the middle wall of partition between us and God. Our sins separated us from God. We were made sinners because of Adam's transgression. Jesus came forth from the Father into this world, was born of a virgin. He was born under the law to redeem them that were under the law, to receive the adoption of sons. And he calls you a son. You become an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Jesus presents you before the Father, holy and unblameable. How he does that? Because his blood blots out sin. And the blood is then applied to the mercy seat of heaven. And he begins to pour into your spirit a brand new nature, the nature of God. You're born again by the Spirit of the living God. Jesus said, except you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of Almighty God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. See, you're born of the incorruptible Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Jesus is the Word of God. He's called faithful and true, the living Word of God. According to the book of Hebrews, we'll go over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now the fathers were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob hath in these last days spoke unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He made the worlds. According to Galatians 1.18, all things were created by him and for him. Verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 1 who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. We were teaching out of the book of Acts chapter 2 in the day of Pentecost of the evidence of that great sound that came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting and appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire sat upon their head. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. There was evidence that day that Jesus sat down and poured out the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is given to those that obey the gospel. The Holy Ghost is not given to the world. The Holy Spirit is upon the earth and he convicts the heart of the unbeliever, the sinner. He convicts their heart of their sin, and their lost condition. He, he reproves the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The Holy Spirit points the way to Jesus Christ and him crucified. For he bore the iniquity of us all. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself through the death of his son. He commended his love towards you while you were dead in your sins. Christ died for you. You were under the dominion of the prince and the power of the air who works in the sons of disobedience. You were without God in this world 
Jesus came into this world born of a virgin, born under the law to redeem them that were under the law. He represented you upon the cross of Calvary and took your place of judgment. He shed his holy blood to remit your sin. He was buried, and on the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead. Jesus said, no man takes my life. I have power to lay my body down and take it up again. This commandment I've received from my Father. The Bible clearly states here in Hebrews chapter 1, when, verse 3, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. See, Jesus appeared to his disciples and apostles for 40 days before he ascended to the Father. That's in, found in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 2. That's when they were in one accord in one place in Jerusalem. He said, go to Jerusalem. You will be endued with power from on high. And you shall receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to send you the promise of my Father, the Holy Ghost. Luke 24, 49. The promise of the Father came on the day of Pentecost. Jesus sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high and poured out the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is all-knowing. He's all wisdom, all understanding. He is the counselor. He is the instructor. He is the fear of God. He is the spirit of might and power. He is the one that can take your situation and turn it around for the Lord's glory. He comes into a heart that's repented before God, a heart that has godly sorrow leadeth to a repentant heart to salvation in Christ Jesus. The sorrow of the world worketh death, but godly sorrow worketh repentance before God to salvation in Jesus Christ. There's no other salvation in any other but the Lord Jesus Christ. No one can save your soul because every person upon the earth was made a sinner. And it's not your works and performance or how many times you pray today that can save your soul. There's only one person. His name is Jesus Christ the Lord, the Son of the living God, who came from the Father of glory into this world, born of a virgin, born under the law to redeem those that were under the law, to fulfill all righteousness requirements of the law, Jesus said, I came not to destroy the law and the prophets, but I came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He's the one that sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the one that pours out the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. He is the one that will manifest in our lives because he's all truth. He is, he is truth. Jesus said, I receive from my Father a commandment what to say and what to speak. I know his commandment is life everlasting. Jesus said, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, said I, he shall take of mine and show it unto you. That's the Holy Spirit that Jesus is talking about in, in the Gospel of John. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. 
lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began speaking which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Notice, gifts of the Holy Ghost. There are gifts given by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor, did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Jesus tasted death for you. God so loved you. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus tasted the judgment of God on your behalf upon the cross of Calvary. Jesus delivers you from the wrath of God when you believe. The wrath of God ab abides on those that are unbelievers. But Jesus delivers us from the wrath because he took your judgment of sin and blotted it out in his own blood upon Calvary's cross. That's why the preaching of the cross is so powerful. It's the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. But those that are perishing, it's foolishness. See, there's no other God but the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the mediator between God and man. The covenant, the New Testament of the covenant of the blood of Christ blots out all sin. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, that had the power of death, that is the devil. It says in 1 John that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That works of the devil was sin and death in humanity. A spiritual death that happened in the garden and resulted in physical death. Verse 15 of Hebrews chapter 2. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. In the fullness of time come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law 
that they might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God puts his spirit within you, the spirit of his son. You cry, Abba, Father. You're joined unto the Lord by one spirit, the spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus Christ because Jesus applied, the blood has been applied to the mercy seat of heaven. It cries out mercy for your soul. It's by his mercies that you are saved. By his grace, that's the realm of of God's provision that has been paid for by the blood of Christ upon Calvary's cross. It's by His grace, divine favor of God. By His grace you're saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. See, Jesus can come right inside your home today by the Spirit of the living God and you can become His child by repenting before God and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be delivered, shall be healed, shall be set free. Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. There's some watching today, you've been addicted to alcohol your whole entire life. You grew up with alcohol in the home. You saw your father drink alcohol and ruined his life. Jesus Christ can deliver you off of that addiction of alcohol and break the bondage and the oppression of the devil off of your life today. There's many watching that you have grieved over lost, lost loved ones. Loved ones that have passed on. You're sitting there with a broken heart, a heart of grief, and a heart of sorrow. Jesus came to heal you of that brokenness. He came to heal you and touch you and comfort you. To bring a newness inside your spirit today. Pursue the Lord. Pursue Him. Set your affections upon him who sits at the right hand of the Father. He said, call upon me and I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. You may be starting all over again because of loss of loved ones. God can take your sorrow and your mourning and your grief and turn it around with the oil of joy and gladness and singing and put a brand new song in your heart of joy, a brand new song in your heart of worshiping God. And out of your belly will flow that great river of the Holy Spirit. See, the gift of God. Jesus is the gift of God, eternal life. He came for the whole person, spirit, soul, and body, to raise your body up out of the grave, that your mortal will take on immortality, that your corruptible body that sin dwelt in will take on incorruption, and you shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and those that are alive shall ever be caught up together with the Lord. It's about returning to Jesus Christ. It's about returning to the Lord. There's many believers watching. You have lost your first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Other things have crowded into your life and have pulled you away. It's time to return to the Lord. It's time to call upon the Lord to break up the fallow ground inside your heart. It's time to seek the Lord, that he will rain upon your spirit, that he will fill that earthen vessel of yours with a river inside of you, the Holy Spirit of God. He's the one that gives you that drink. He's called the fountain of living waters. He said, come unto me, you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly of heart. You shall find rest to your souls. Sorrow and mourning will flee away. The joy that God has for you will be inside your spirit. That joy is a fountain a fountain that can never go dry. It'll spring forth with new life, new life coming out of your spirit. New life, new life and new vision inside of your heart to pursue the things of God. Looking unto Jesus, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross for you. He endured it. And he said, come on to me, all you that are heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. This is the refreshing. This is the rest. The Bible says, repent and be therefore converted at times of refreshing will come to you from the presence of the Lord. Jesus is your refreshing waters that never grow, that never go dry. They're brand new every day and every morning. It's the spirit of his grace and mercy that lives and abides. Thank you so much for watching times of refreshing, and we will continually teach on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.